and CEO, esports coach at the Southern University Lab, and gamer. Discussions on the emergence of esports at the K through 12, collegiate, and professional level. Let's go! Let's go play. Ah, uh, this is your host, Christopher Turner. We're here at Go Play Esports Podcast. Today is a, a awesome day. This is the last show of uh, 2020. Um, and, you know, I'm a spiritual guy. You know, I, I prayed about it and, and, you know, I wanted God to show me like what that show will look, look like. I thought about doing like a recap and like bringing guests on throughout the year that I had on, which was a great idea. I might still do that at some point. Um, but I, I ran across a guy by the name of Alan Kaplan. Uh, he had a uh, a son by the name of uh, y'all might know him as J Cap is awesome. Um, very highly engaged on LinkedIn. Uh, this 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 is a story about purpose, uh, about overachieving obstacles, and you know going towards your goals and understanding your purpose and operating within your purpose, uh, knowing that you might not have an, a lot of time. Um, when I saw it, I just, uh, it, it touched me in a way of like, you know, Hey man, you know, uh, you know, I had to back kind of backtrack and think back. I was a truck driver for 10 years. Uh, I had an accident, a near death accident. A lot of people that know me probably really don't even know the story. Uh, but I was thrown out, out the front of the window and, uh, I just had a few scratches on my back. Nothing was broken. Um, I hit a, uh, a um, interstate sign that cut through the driver's seat of the truck. Uh, my seatbelt broke. Um, after that whole spill, after that accident, um, it was the day before my 25th birthday. I'm now I'm now I'm 36, and I, I remember like constantly thinking and, and asking God what my purpose was because evidently I was here for a reason. Uh, I think I think Jared Kaplan knew exactly what his purpose was. I know I think he he probably knew he didn't have enough time, so he uh, he vlogged a lot of his journey with the help of his dad and his family. And um, I want to get into that whole spill. Uh, this this show for me is how I would want to end the year. Uh, uh, Jared also had a, a foundation that he developed, and we're going to get into all of that. Uh, before he uh, he left us in January of this year. And I, I really want to highlight that foundation. I want to highlight his dad and his family. And, you know, we just want to you know, celebrate and capitalize uh, on, on what Jerry left us. And so I have to handle some, some, some business right now. I'm going to go into uh, to, to control. Control is, is definitely a, a product that I use all the time. If you watch me every week, you know that I use control, controldrink.com. It's pretty much what I'm talking about. If you go to control, uh, I mean, drinkcontrol.com, you can go taste that new gingerbread cookie flavor. You can use code uh, GOPLAYES. That's GOPLAYES to get you a discount. We're going to play a commercial uh, from Control right now. And we'll be back right after this uh, commercial. Introducing Gingerbread Cookie from Control. Get it while it lasts. All right, that's drinkcontrol.com, code GoPlayES. That's GoPlayES. Get you a discount on that awesome product. It's a meal replacement. I use it every day. Uh, I used it this morning. I didn't eat breakfast. I just used that. So at this time, I'd like to bring in Alan Chaplin. How you doing, sir? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. You know, uh, you know, we're here, we're here to celebrate your, your son, man, and uh, – you know, it's just a pleasure to have you on, and we want to kind of get, 
you know, directly into it. Tell us, tell us about J-Cap, like who he was as a person. You started off with that intro with me, making me cry a little bit. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's all right. Well, that's the thing. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing to look back on since January 15th when he passed away and to reflect on his life and the experiences that he and I had. Um, one of the first messages I received back on January 15th, I drove four hours back home for the first time in 12 years without him and had a message from a school bus driver in Florida when he was five years old, 17 years ago, that sent a message and told me two or three stories about Jared. So that'll give you kind of an, an understanding of the impact the kid had at five years old. How do you remember a story? He only rode the bus two or three times. and uh, But he made an impact on that lady enough to have Miss Ann send a message and tell stories about him. And so it's been my privilege with he and the rest of my children to observe and to step back and to watch them grow and to watch other people, especially with Jared, other people that would watch him. Um, I never got offended with people looking at him once he, he had different stages of his life where he walked for a period of time. But I'm, I'm a weird guy. August 31st, 2008, I remember standing at 10 o'clock in the evening in the bathroom with him leaning up against my lap, brushing his teeth on his own. But after he finished doing that, he said to me, I can't do it anymore, Dad. And that was literally at that time, the last time that he really stood up on his own. And so that progression, um, it was interesting to watch how he took it on. Um, we'll jump ahead to senior year in high school in 2016. Um, a few months before his year ended, I talked to him. I said, Jared, what, what's the plans? What are you planning on doing the rest of your life? Are you going to go to school? He told me he didn't want to go to school. Um, what plans do you have? And he said, well, I want to start a YouTube channel. And for me, at, at my age, I didn't even know what that meant. So, right. If that's what you want to do, I'm, I'm okay with that. I want a business plan. I want you to show me how you're going to do it. How are you going to make money? What, how are you going to produce whatever you're going to do? And within a matter of three days, he had a business plan intact. In and um, we went from April of 2016, his first disability check he got at 18 years old. Mm. I got home from work and he said, Dad, I just bought us tickets to COD XP 2016 <laughs> Championships. And I said, okay, do we get to keep the card? When I right. <laughs> No, you idiot, it's Call of Duty, which I knew. Just right. teasing them. I said, well, you're buying, I'm driving. <clears throat> so that was my first trip to be his chauffeur. And in my mind, I literally, when we talk about esports, my mind, I was, um, I, I coined the phrase, fat, slobby, couch, potato, video geeks. <clears throat> that's what I assumed that I was going to see when I showed up to the forum in L.A. And as we drove up around that big facility and I saw 20,000 people walking from the parking lot into the facility, that venue, I said to myself, that's not anything what I imagined. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a thrill for me. We, that, that first venue for him, first time out of state, in a wheelchair, um, I said, Jared, we're not going to go park over there in the parking lot with, and have to drive your wheelchair all the way across the street. We're going inside. No, Dad, you can't do that. That's VIP parking. So, dude, you have a wheelchair on the back. Let me show you how to use this. Thing. Right. <laughs> so uh, we pulled in and said, where's your handicap parking? We pulled up to the front of the building, and we got out to check in. No, Dad, this was VIP check-in. We have to go around the building. He said, dude, just shut up and roll in. Shut up and roll with me. <laughs> and he rolled in, and they looked at him with a smile. And, I mean, back in those days, I didn't know you even could do a scan on your phone. Right. So, again, technologically challenged. That was only four years ago. <laughs> so True. He scans his phone, and we turned around, and there was a lady staring at us with a smile on her face. And she said, are you guys ready? I said, sure. And she took us down on the elevator, down on the floor of the forum. And she said, sit wherever you want to sit. I said, that's great. I'm a front row Joe. Let's go, Jared. So we literally sat on the very front against the stage next to a guy from Activision, one of the logistics guys. And 
Um, they announced uh, Bobby Kotick as uh, MC, <clears throat> and he stood up right from behind us. He happened to be sitting right behind us there. So, again, it was just like a whirlwind. That mm-hmm. first tournament, Scuff Gaming was there. I didn't know who they were other than we bought a controller for Jared. Um, and so it, it was just a thrill. We ended that tournament <clears throat> on the Sunday afternoon. I think Team Envy won that tournament. The other J Cap with the K was on the winning team. Yeah. We didn't know he existed either. So now we had two J Caps, <laughs> one with the K. We always say, and we've met each other, we're both same last names. Jordan Kaplan, Jared Kaplan, yeah. spelled a little different. We are always called him Cousin Cap. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, after that was over, they gave the check to the to their team, the winning team. Snoop Dogg and Wiz came out and uh, did a concert. Now, again, Jared grew up in the south in Florida. Exactly. And uh, he was a rapper. I mean, he, he, that's a long story there, too. But he right. we were up front singing, and he was up. I guess singing all the songs of Snoop and to right. the point where Snoop stopped 57 minutes, literally into the concert and called security after a song. And you have 20, again, 25,000 people there saying what's going on. And he gets a hold of the security down front and says, Hey, you, back right here. He pulled this beanie off and he said, can you give this little beanie to the homie in the wheelchair down there? Man. That kid has been rocking all night long. Don't you mess with that kid. Right. And, um, I mean, 25,000 people are cheering, <clears throat> and he turns around and walks back towards Wiz, and he turns around and pulls his glasses off, and he says, wait, 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 give him my glasses so he can see what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> I'm part of cheers. So, um, you know, 10 minutes later, the concert's over, and I, as we waited for people to clear off the floor to get on the elevator, I leaned over Jared's shoulder, and I said, Jared, did you see that coming? He said, well, I keep thinking that Snoop was pointing at me and singing at me. But right. No, I didn't think that was going to happen. Man. And Jared looked at me. He looked right up at me and said, Dad, I'm going to be famous. Wow. And at that point there, had such an indication as we traveled for the next three years, um, the, the most uh, successful people in the world, like Snoop, down to the most humble people in Atlanta, mm-hmm. three homeless people that stopped. And we, we videotaped and did a did a little YouTube uh, video on that episode where he had some um, communications and some discussions with three guys. So yeah. no matter if a guy was on the streets or if he was in a position like um, Snoop was, there was something about that kid that drew people's attention. I want to, you, you, so, you, you, you talked on a few things and I want to, I want to show this video uh, that was put together about a call, call of duty lead. I know you've saw it, but some of my viewers might not saw it, but it's, it's a memory of Jerry. And so let me, let me play this right quick and then we'll come back. Okay. I mean, Jacob is awesome. His name says it all. He was awesome. Couldn't go to a tournament and not see him and not know he was there. I can't remember an event they were not at. Like, they were called these super fans and basically a friend of the community at this point. I would associate, you know, going to an event and seeing them as part of the event. You know, there was also warming up and playing and stuff, but seeing them was also just like a little snippet of, you know, part of the event. You could have a bad weekend, but then I would see Jacob and his dad, and, you know, no matter what, like, screw the weekend. Like, they're here. Jacob's happy. He's just doing what he loves. It's just a rarity to have fans who you see every single event. This was the best type of super fan you could ever ask for. I would say the first thing that I think of when I think of Jcap is just sheer like perseverance. Even though there were obviously you know hurdles for him, it didn't matter to him. He always had a smile on his face, cracking jokes with his dad. He was a super super good kid. I think a lot of players tend to forget what we're doing is, you know, kind of a form of entertainment. And I think he was a great reminder for everyone of that. This is why you do it, and this is what you're here for. Losing someone like that, I think it hits everyone. It hits the production, it hits the event organizers, it hits the players, it hits everyone. It just inspired a lot of people, uh, including myself. Even though he couldn't do certain things, he, like, showed... I don't know, a lot of strength and a lot of courage just to do all the things that he did. People that didn't know him, I feel bad for them because he was a great kid, man, and it just feels like 
there's something missing now at events for sure. I know he's going to be in a, a lot of people's hearts and memories. I, I think it was a big loss for the community. Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Jake out here. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Jake out here. Jake Cap is awesome. 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 Man, it's, uh, it's just awesome to me, man, just uh, to see you here and, and knowing that everything is, is fresh and showing your strength and know you're, you're in some form of, of, of grieving, but yet you keep pushing on uh, within J Cap's uh, name, man. And, uh, you know, you and I, we, we talked you know, offline and you were telling me like how he, he produced, not only was he a player, I, I kind of got backtracked a little bit too, uh, Call of Duty, like I'm a first person shooter fanatic. You know, I'm a, I'm a coach, and you know, I have esports podcasts and everything. And esports is like this, you know, one of the center things within my life outside of God and family, right? Um, but you know, first person shooters are like it for me. Like, I think probably after I get out the podcast, I'm gonna get with all the older guys that can't play as good as J Cap, and we're probably gonna run some games, right? Uh, but you know he put out, he put together his vlogs and everything. Like, did he did he understand? You know, I know I know like the Call of Duty League was an impact on him. Did he did he know that he was an impact to them as well? It took him a while to f- figure that out. I think the um, moment that he, it registered in his mind was in Atlanta at our third tournament in the CNN building across the street from the venue. Um, we were stopped by the third person in about two hours. It was a homeless guy. Good old Grady Blake. Love the guy. He walked straight up to Jared. And the first thing he said to him was, you're awesome. And I took, I, I started rolling the camera from that point on. So Jared, I think, edited and put together a video called MLG Atlanta, Best of the Best. And you can see his um, visits with a few people, four or five different people there. Um, at that point, when we finished with Grady, we started driving out of the uh, venue, and Jared turned around in his chair, and he said, Dad, put the camera on me. I got to talk. And that's part of that video where he said three times now, people have stopped me, um, not in a very good position in their lives, but went out of their way uh, to make me feel good about myself. They didn't judge me for my wheelchair. And at that point, he owned it. I think that's when he really understood that he did have a power and he accepted it, but he always looked out for others. Um, he always looked out for the people there, uh, whether it was in school, his family, and he really, he put the cap on at that point and started um, looking for ways to just really enlighten people and make people's lives happy. Yeah. And, and, and so that's a good comment and, and a good segue for me to kind of go into uh, the JCAPS Foundation for Disabilities. Let's let's talk about, you know, and this Jared actually developed this before he, he, he left us. And let's let's talk about, you know, uh, the pillars of, of, of the foundation and what it represents. Well, again, <clears throat> Jared's hope was that he could inspire people. In fact, again, his first YouTube video was how to get Snoop Dogg's beanie and glasses. <laughs> I watched that a few months back. I I watch videos every day um, on him. It's it's enjoyable to listen to the little tidbits of things that he says and catch something else, just a a little sentence or a little phrase that had more meaning than I realized. But, you know, he he looked at opportunities to lift people. And so I think one of the first projects that he and I started was uh, uh, he had posted a video about his muscular dystrophy and how he deals with it. And there was a young man over in Bangladesh that became a friend of his on YouTube. And he would call me uncle every now and then. He'd jump on Facebook Messenger, uncle, what about Jared? And we'd talk back and forth. And uh, But Jared noticed back in probably September of 2019 that uh, he was sitting in a small wheelchair, a manual wheelchair, and that was one of Jared's first um, projects was to fix up a couple of his wheelchairs 
and send it over to he and this kid's brother because they both had the same muscular dystrophy. So that's where we started with the foundation. Um, for me, perpetuate that love that he shared with others and the, the good feelings that came as a result of that. It, it's a two-way thing. This is why I love esports so much is that there are so many people that all of those guys have made comments to him in that video. Um they don't talk about the little things. And then I'm not even sure if they realized just the little attention they gave a kid. Um, the hello, the look at him, the, the signing of shir- shirts, um, autographs and things like that. Those little tidbits of things that we do for each other elevate each one of us. It makes us feel better about themselves. It gives us that purpose in life, so to speak. And so um, my ultimate goal is to continue that. I, I'm addicted to that. Um, from the first moment we showed up to the first tournament, um, I became the one that was addicted, and I made sure that we were at all 16 tournaments that we were able to um, attend. Um, and again, he, he was always looking for ways to make sure people fit in. There's, um, I'll give you one last little quick story. <clears throat> in Miami, South Miami Beach, at the second to the last tournament we went to, and July of 2019, we were out at the beach, and there was a kid that walked up and started talking to Jared. And um, I'm not sure what position he was in life in his family, but Jared invited him, asked him if he would like to come with us to the tournament. And so Jared invited him. He came with us. He was just overwhelmed and excited about being in there. You know, Jay Cap rolled up to the security, said, he's with me, and so they let him in, and this kid had a chance to experience an entire day there at a tournament. I don't know that he ever could have afforded to do it himself. Right. But that's the kind of thing that Jared's, that, that was his personality. He looked out for other people and giving opportunities. So, so the, the foundation, um, that truck that I had a truck built for him. There we go. It took us seven months to get that back. It came in two days after he passed away. Um, that was bittersweet on that, but I've looked at that truck for several months and, you know, aggravated to have a lot of money sunk into that. And I, I decided I want to create JCAP's legacy limo service out of it. So um, our goal is to pick up kids as many days as we can during the week that don't that have disabilities and give them a thrill to show up to school one morning in a jacked up, uh, tricked out limo service there for kids with disabilities. There you so, go. Um, we had our first run at a homecoming dance a few months ago back in September. And um, it did what I thought it would do. It gave these kids some credibility. It gave them a thrill that they normally don't have. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I thought that the ultimate thing was that they would show up to the dance, the door would open, the lift would swing out, and they would get a thrill out of other people seeing them in the truck. But the reality is they didn't even care. If other people were looking for them, they had a, a chance to do something out of the ordinary and it gave them a little relevance in their life. And so and those are the things that ultimately I want to try to continue to accomplish. I want to be able to reach out to people. I, I don't know. I am an old guy, so 57 years old. Um, I'd, I'd love to be able to show up to some of the tournaments again and see some of the players that were there and watch them compete. Um, yeah, but again, it's, it's about doing the little things and promoting the fact that um, you know we really need to look out for each other. And, yeah, uh, definitely. Bond, so, mm-hmm. and and on that on the note of of uh, the the foundation, you have a, a legacy tournament uh, that's going on with today today and tomorrow, right? I, th- I think what they've done, Generation Esports, has postponed that a little bit because of okay. the holidays, and so we're gonna. Reschedule that towards the end of January. Um, again, my perception, we, we had a lot of logistics we're working out. And so I, that's going to continue on. But I think we're, we're going to postpone that for a, about three weeks, four weeks, and and get it organized a little bit better on a weekend rather than a weekday. That's good. So yeah. actually, we're hoping we'll do that on January 15th is the uh, – day that Jared passed away, so we may do it somewhere in conjunction of that time period. So Yeah. I definitely um you know 
when I when I saw the tournament, man, you know, I'll help you promote that tournament in any way. Uh, but it was it was uh, Call of Duty and Rocket League, right? Right. And uh, the those are my friends over at Generation Esports, and so you know whatever we can do to get more schools involved to to raise money mm-hmm. uh, to go towards the disability Jerry had, uh, just let me know I'm ready to activate it anytime, and you know we can make it bigger than just a Utah thing, you know. Right. So it's well, like, I, I, again, it's it's about the. I wrote an article on LinkedIn here a couple of weeks ago in regards to the psychology of esports how vital it is. What I saw at these tournaments is different than what Jared saw. For me, I was looking at the interactions that occurred with these kids. Um, I was looking at the interaction with the adults and the kids, all of the logistics that went along with it. Um, Mm -hmm. It's it's a a massive project. But to to see the camaraderie that was created by um, a video game, as some parents would call it, yeah, We're far beyond that, um, we don't have the same interactions that I had 40 years ago when I was growing up where we have face-to-face interactions. We didn't have the iPhones and things here. And we all hear stories about how kids become addicted to their technology. But what it does is it sends out a false stimuli, an, an artificial stimuli in my mind, that doesn't feed that spirit, that doesn't feed that physical interaction that we normally would get and there's people that are i feel like these kids are starving for that starving for attention and when i watched thousands of kids get together at these tournaments i saw them feeding off each other and and uh i never saw an un, a frowny face there was always smiles even during the competition the trash talking those things it ended with the love for each other and being there and participating in something together so I'm a proponent on esports for sure at this point. Yeah. And so in, in utilizing that as a platform, um, people need it. They need those land parties. They need those events there. And uh, they need to be able to have a, a reason to bond with each other. So That's awesome, man. I Well, you know, we've had these conversations. I fully believe in esports. It's one of the reasons why I started this podcast. It's one of the reasons why. I'm in South Louisiana, and I have one of the only high school esports programs in, in the state. So, you know, I totally get it. I think people are gradually uh, learning uh, and getting educated about esports, and I think, you know, the sky's the limit. When they see stories like J. Caps and others, it brings all kind of people together, all kind of races, you know, disabilities, no disabilities, you know, nerds and athletes, and so – um, I love just seeing that, that interaction too, like you just described. Um, we have a few more minutes left in the show. Um, you know, you're able to kind of plug away, you know, uh, okay. and, and tell, tell them about uh, JCAP's YouTube, uh, how, how to go. Well, I'll tell you, JCAP's Foundation for Disabilities, it's uh, jcapisawesome.org. That lists a few of the projects that Jared was working on when he was here. And me, I've been in construction for quite a while, so. Ten years ago, I, I saw a young kid driving under a, an overpass through a double roundabout in the town we live in to go to work. He had muscular dystrophy like Jared had, and that was back in 2011 or 12. I saw that kid, and it scared me to death. Here's a kid, no flags, trucks coming and going, and and I said to myself, well, what am I going to do with Jared when he gets out of school? You know, How is he going to go to work? What are those types of things that we need to deal with? So. Over the years, I've put together a business plan, and I've just finished it up recently and ready for a presentation here in the next couple of weeks. Of a, I've created a subdivision that caters towards families with special needs, wow. that entire lifestyle. Uh, our local techno, uh, Dixie Technical College is here. The president of that college knows Jared very well. And, uh, in fact, she has a student that's in a wheelchair that can't use her arms that graduated Lindsay Smith graduated with a drafting degree certificate, and she actually drew my clubhouse and uh, some of the buildings and, and several houses that we're going to be building in the subdivision. That was her project as a drafts person there. So, again, a girl without a, a pen in her mouth and a mouse in her wheelchair lap, and she wow. graduated a student of the year. So I asked Kelly, Kelly Stevens about four months ago, I 
And when she found out Jared passed away, I shared that with her. I said, I need help. I need to build a subdivision. I don't care mm-hmm. if I make any money at it. I've spent 22 years from bell to bell now with a kid with a disability. And if I don't build the subdivision, I'll, I'll feel like I've wasted 22 years of experience that I have that I can share with other families and uh, provide that system, that format. It's not like I'm going to sit a family down and say, okay, here's what you're going to expect in year 5, 8, 10, 12, 20. But because I already know those types of things, I'll be able to have an opportunity to create that structure so that when they face those challenges, the system's already in place there to take right. me off of those days, a cafeteria, a medical clinic, a work facility, all in, encompassed within that subdivision that provides for them, provides for the parents, provides for the siblings that don't have the disabilities, that entire lifestyle. That's a beautiful thing. So jcapisawesome.org shows you his two projects, a custom controller we were working on, my subdivision. Um, I want to create some smaller gaming venues here in local towns where people can experience that, that face-to-face interaction like that. So I, and I, that's my plug. We'd love to have all the support that we can. I don't know how to fundraise. <laughs> to right, me. right. This is new, completely new to me. So I guess, I, you know, do you beg for people to support us? I'm not sure how to do that. But yeah. we certainly are looking for as much support as we can financially so we can keep that truck rolling so we can – move forward to some of the other projects with Jared. And when we see opportunities to lift somebody, we want to be able to be in that position to do it. So I'm going to end with this, Christopher. Mm. Um, at that la- that very first tournament that Jared and I went to, after the Snoop Dogg incident, we loaded up in the, in the truck. Uh, we drove down to a gas station to fill up. And again, me, I'm a very, I'm a defensive guy. I'm his chauffeur and I'm his bodyguard. Right. So as I got out and started to put the nozzle into the gas tank, I could see a person coming out from the back corner of me, walking up, approaching me. And my defensive mechanism went in. He starts to walk up and reaches out. And I said, go away. Leave now. Mm-hmm. And uh, no question. I didn't hear what he had to say or anything. I just, just leave. And as I turned around and started pumping, I could see Jared's face sitting in the front passenger seat. He couldn't really turn his head at me, but I heard him. He didn't. Have, he didn't have to say anything, but I heard him say, "Man, Dad, that was harsh. That was yeah. real harsh." And I had a pit in my stomach as I was pumping gas there for about five minutes. And as I felt that way, I turned around and I saw the guy standing off in the corner, and I motioned for him to come back over here. He walked up to me, and I looked at him and said, "You need some gas?" He says, "Yeah, man, I'm out of gas." I, I'm just trying to sell it, whatever I can do. So pull your car out. We filled him up with gas. I rolled down the window and said, this is my son, Jared, J-Cap. And uh, he said, God bless you. Thank you so much what you did. And I got in the car, turned the car on and took off. And Jared's comment was, good job, Dad. Good job. <laughs> and so pass it on. Those there things... Um, there's no, there was never a fear with anybody with Jared. There was only love, and mm-hmm. uh, I, that's my plug. If we do nothing else, make somebody's day today. That's that's my mission statement. Make somebody's day every day like it's the only day. I don't mm-hmm. care about tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is going to take care of itself. But today, you can do something that will elevate somebody else's life. And so, but that's the mission and. Um, I don't think Jared and I ever met anybody we didn't like and love. So awesome, man! Thank you, thank you for uh, coming on today. Uh, give my condolences to your wife and the rest of your kids, and uh, just thank you for just coming on and sharing your your, your personal stories with Jared. And uh, you know, I think the sky's the limit, man, as far as keeping his legacy going and keeping that spirit going, as far as just passing it on and and loving on each other, man. And uh, I think the world needs more of that, uh, especially during these times. So thank you again. Thank you. All right. That was Alan Kaplan. Uh, we just talked about his son, uh, Jared, J cap, uh, J cap is awesome. Please just Google J cap is awesome. Go donate. Uh, 
Alan, I'm going to take care of this one for you, man, because I can fundraise. Uh, we need to find a, a cure for what he had. Um, they need funding for to keep this limo going. They need funding to keep uh, all those aspirations and goals that Jerry had to, to fruition. Um, God gave Jerry those plans. Let's help them manifest themselves uh, on this earth, man, before we leave. So JCAP is awesome. They have donation buttons on the website. Go find me, PayPal, and it's another option as well. You can take that cell phone scan, give five, give ten. You know, if you can give more than that, I know times are tight, but trust me, just go support them. Uh, they definitely need it. Uh, I hate to have to handle business again, but let's go to our last sponsor uh, for, for the day. This is T-Fossey Gaming. T-Fossey is the, uh, the glasses that I wear to protect my eyes. It's code GoPlayES. You know, that's always our code any platform that we on. It's always that. Go get your discount. Go get you uh, some swank, as they call it, at T5C. Protect those eyes. Uh, less headaches. But let's run this commercial, and we'll be back to close out the show. That was T-Fossey Gaming. Go over there and get you some T-Fossey Swank. Uh, you can totally customize those glasses. I have a couple of pair of those. Uh, make sure you're protecting your eyes while you're in front of that screen, while you're playing countless times, especially on this break. Uh, I don't know if y'all noticed today, but we actually had 2021 uh, across the, the overlay today. Uh, it's almost New Year's. I appreciate all the support that I had this year. We're going to get bigger and better. We're going to constantly grow. Uh, I just started this podcast off just to get news around my state. And this is taking me and develop relationships and friendships that I never thought I would have, um, support that I never thought I would have. Uh, thank you for my listeners in India. Thank, thank you to the listeners in Germany, the United States, Africa, uh, all over the globe. Um, I just pulled up the analytics uh, last night. And it's just a blessing uh, for for us to be where we are, we're, we're over 2,000 downloads for the year. This all started, what, two weeks before COVID. And um, I just enjoy um, the relationships and I enjoy the support. And I'm thankful and grateful for it. I didn't see this podcast growing like this. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to Alan, this is my way of paying it for it, man. This, this, this platform here, this is for uh, people like yourself and others, man. And I want people to learn and grow and develop together. And so, you know, um, to everybody, happy new years, be safe. You know, COVID is still out here, but trust me, man, be safe. These holidays, man, don't, don't get too involved with crowds of people, you know, do zoom, do Facebook live, do whatever you got to do to see your loved ones, but be careful. So this is your host, Christopher Turner. This is go play esports, And then, you know, we always say go play esports. 